Amid the pandemic, many people have chosen to avoid public places and turn to online shopping. But shoppers beware of e-commerce disputes and scams, and especially scams found on so-called one-page websites. These shopping sites display information about a product, purchase options, and an order button all on a single page. The layout is simple and clear, and shoppers can order without loading a new page. Now, in the hands of unscrupulous merchants, one-page websites have been used as a tool for fraud. Many of these merchants are based in China, and they sell counterfeit Taiwanese products. They create one-page sites that appear to sell the real thing at a bargain. Only when the product arrives does the shopper find that it's a knockoff from a questionable source. Is there a way to track down the seller and claim a refund? FTV's Hall of Descent investigates. Using the brand name of the Grand Hotel, an unscrupulous merchant sells counterfeit gift boxes on the internet. This hairy crab roll paste is advertised at bargain price. Turns out it's a low-grade product from a little-known locale in China. To put it simply, one-page advertising fraud involves copying products that are popular and selling well and using them to commit fraud. If you eat it and have a health issue, who's to be held responsible? Under the faint light of the sky, chickens squawk and circle the ground. Today, this pig farmer, surname Ye, is as moody as the clouds overhead. He'd order chocolates through a one-page e-commerce site, hoping to support Taiwanese cocoa farmers. But instead of helping his fellow farmers, he became the victim of fraud. It's true that the images are from Taiwan. All the photos are of Ping Dong's cocoa farm harvest. Then I received chocolate that was produced in China. My initial intentions were very simple. I wanted to support the farmers and buy a few boxes to share with friends. In the end, I got scammed. On the website he ordered from, the ad copy says that the world's best dark chocolate is produced in Taiwan. The product is also advertised as natural and organic. The price is 1,498 NT for nine boxes, which comes out to about 166 NT a box. Ye placed his order without a second thought and was surprised to receive boxes of chocolate from Tianjin, China. I didn't really dare to eat it, didn't really want to. Chinese products, you know how they can be. I'm wary of products from China. There's a lot of contaminated food. We took the name of the chocolate year received and searched for it on the internet. We found the same product listed on Alibaba.com. But there, each box cost only 6 yuan or about 30 NT. In other words, Ye didn't just receive a product that was not as advertised, he also paid five times more than what it costs in China. To see if what happened was a mistake or a scam, FTV's Hall of Descent investigative team went to the website he used and placed another order. Hmm. We purchased three boxes, which arrived in two days. Upon opening the package, we saw the same Made in China chocolate. We inspected the shipping box and found signs that it had been reused. Could it have been returned by the previous buyer before being relabeled and sent off to the next one? Police say that's a common practice in cases of online fraud. It's true that some of these products are returned to warehouse providers for storage. These warehouse providers might have cooperative agreements with overseas merchants under which they reship two times or even three times. Just what tactics do unscrupulous sellers use to lure customers into their trap? One-page websites are meant to be simple and clear. All the details, from the product introduction, to the price, to the order button, are all placed on the same page. 
With just a swipe on the screen, you can place an order without waiting for a new page to load. To tempt customers who love a bargain, unscrupulous sellers often set prices at 50% or more below similar products. Sometimes they put up a countdown timer for special deals, so customers feel they're in a race against time. They use phrases that attract consumers like free shipping, seven-day return window, or cash on delivery. You don't need to pay right away. But you should watch out. When you're not sending money, the seller might be manipulating this cash flow. If you pay with a credit card, that's even more dangerous, because the seller may steal your credit card number. One-page websites offer a dazzling array of fraudulent goods. Even government-certified health products can be the subject of counterfeiting. They stole our commercials, our imagery, and our packaging. As soon as we produced a new ad, they would steal the whole thing for their own use to make a fake thing look real. This copycat product is difficult to distinguish from the real thing. Compare the two under the light and the boxes are nearly identical, with only a slight difference in text color. Compare the color of the capsules and it's even harder to tell real from fake. Our capsules are slightly darker. The imitation product is a bit more red. A customer called us, said he bought a counterfeit product, and wanted us to alert the police. We opened up the counterfeit product, and there were a bad odor inside. The vendor sent the counterfeit product to a biotech firm for tests. The lab results were alarming. The total bacteria count exceeds safety levels. The E. coli exceeds the standard. There's absolutely no Manascus purpose in it. So our fear is that this is putting people's health in danger. These online fraud victims form only the tip of the iceberg. In 2020, the Executive Yuan's Consumer Protection Committee received more than 2,300 complaints of one-page advertisement fraud. Between January and April of 2021, it received more than 600. In mid-May of that year, there was a surge in the COVID epidemic. A cybersecurity provider said that in the first two weeks of Taiwan's Level 3 pandemic alert, it detected an explosion of scam activity and blocked risky URLs as many as 750,000 times. One product that appeared online was pulse oximeters, which were out of stock at many brick-and-mortar stores. But authorities warned against buying them from one-page websites where the seller's identity could not be verified. What's more, the Pharmaceutical Affairs Act classifies pulse oximeters as class 2 medical devices. This means they can only be sold legally by licensed pharmacies or medical device merchants. To put it simply, one-page advertising fraud involves copying products that are popular and selling well and using them to commit fraud. Not every victim of online fraud files a formal complaint. The actual number of victims far exceeds the government figures. This is our Facebook page. We're the Advertising Self-Help Return Union. On any given day, 10 to 20 people tell us they've been scammed. In 2016, several victims formed a support group to bring government attention to the issue of online fraud. In the group, victims share stories of how they managed to return fraudulent goods. That can be hard to do because online fraudsters tend not to leave their real phone number and address on one-page websites. Usually, they only list an email address. Victims who use it rarely get a response and are forced to search the product packaging for clues about the sender. Whenever the sender is a logistics company or whenever there's a label that says not the merchant, the package is almost always a fraudulent product from China. 
Look closely at this box used to ship Ye's counterfeit chocolates. In the sender's column, there is a company name and an address in Taoyuan's Luzhu district. Many fake products bought by the support group's members were sent out by the same company from the same address. The package was from Luzhu district, so a Taiwanese business person was involved. How this person is connected to China, we don't know. We may need to find out. So our investigative team went to the address listed on the shipping box. As we rode from downtown Luju district to a small county road, we saw a number of logistics companies. Finally, we arrived at our destination. What caught our eye was a giant blue metal warehouse where company signboards were being put up as we approached. We're just a logistics company. We're responsible for going to the airport to pick up goods. The company told us that it was not a seller, but a logistics intermediary for goods already sold. We headed south to visit another sender flagged by the fraud victim support group. There, we received the same response. Our clients in China are also consolidation warehouses. Their role is that of a freight forwarder. During freight transfer, the products are already packed. Businesses like his, ones that specialize in overseas packages, are referred to by police as tally service providers. When consumers complain of shopping scams, such providers are the first to be investigated. They unpack goods that come into Taiwan, sort them, and ship them to people in the country. The labels on the packages are placed there by tally service providers. Companies like HCT Logistics, they don't like to go out of their way to undertake freight from abroad. So there's a middleman, a so-called tally service provider. Such providers can get confused with true logistics companies, because their company names often contain the words logistics company. The scams work like this. When a seller in China receives an order, it sends the product to a Chinese consolidation warehouse, which usually has the tally service provider in Taiwan. The Taiwan partner is notified of an incoming shipment. Once the shipment arrives and passes customs, the partner goes to the airport to pick it up. After customs declaration, we go to collect the shipment. Then we distribute the goods to TCAT, HCT Logistics, and the logistics providers of convenience stores so that the goods are dispatched in waves. By law, a recipient in Taiwan must authorize the customs declaration of an overseas parcel before it can enter the country. The question is, what happens when a recipient doesn't know a product is from China? In such cases, how is the customs declaration authorized? According to police, some tally service providers collude with customs brokers to exploit a gray area in administrative law. The products sold on one-page websites are typically listed as being worth 2,000 NT or less. When such products go through customs, they don't need to be accompanied by a power of attorney form. The form can be issued later. In most fraud cases, this provision is exploited to import large amounts of goods that are not declared to customs. Through the manipulation of customs declarations, the door to the country is thrown open. Once the tally service provider receives payment for the goods, it transfers money to the Chinese seller through an underground exchange. Taiwan police have been able to trace the cash flow to China, but due to the impasse in cross-strait relations, they've been unable to pursue their investigations to the end. Although the sellers themselves can't be tracked down, Taiwan police also investigate the sellers' partners in fraud. They believe that Taiwanese tally service providers and customs brokers also have liability. They're more likely to be involved as an accessory, mainly in crimes like fraud and forging documents. But when police transfer their cases to prosecutors, Prosecutors often determine that there was no intent to defraud. And most of the time, Taiwanese businesses are willing to refund money to customers. 
Because of this, the cases are handled not as criminal fraud but as civil fraud. More often than not, the cases are dropped in the end. Every week, 600 to 800 packages are returned. We try to give this feedback to the Chinese freight companies to say, maybe there is a problem with one of your fines. You should investigate this. That merchant over in China, there might be a problem with the merchant because when it comes to this product, 100 units are going out and 50 to 60 of them are coming back. Some tally service providers make an effort to regulate problematic sellers. And today, thanks to the Consumer Protection Committee and National Police Agency, victims of cash-on-delivery scams are better able to seek redress. We were in constant communication with the two major convenience store chains, Unipresident and Family Mart. The economics ministry also called them in for talks. In the end, they agreed that consumers should have a complaint hotline. Returns aren't made directly to the convenience store, but at least the channel for returns is provided. Amid COVID and the rise of the stay-at-home economy, online shopping has become a part of everyday life. However, hidden traps abound on the internet. One-page websites have made victims of many a consumer, so think twice before placing an order.